So similar to your example, I have defined a test function here. I've defined an example variable. I've updated the example variable. And I have created these pixel and percent functions that I see are present in your code, but don't know what they actually do. I assume they just add px or percent as a string onto whatever's passed into them. So that's what I've done here. And the only thing separate from writing this JavaScript is I'm going to import this library that I've been talking about that I've been working on, and I'll show you after. And to use it, we're going to write this to a file. And what we're going to write is the processed loaded this file. And we're also going to pass in the pixel function, the percent function, the test function, and the example variable that has been updated by this point. So each of these will be available to our JavaScript as we interpolate it. Now if we hop over to our file, it looks just like a regular CSS file except we have this interpolation here with these special brackets. So everything on the inside of these is going to be JavaScript and everything on the outside is going to be 100% CSS. So we're able to use both languages fully together. And when I compile this, we should get one output file here. And so here, this is your desired result, 70px and 110%. So what is in this JSTS node library and how does it do in its magic? So it only pulls in the file system and a glob package, as well as its own function. And to load, you give it a path. It loads all the files at that path. And then you end up with an array of the file contents as a string of each of those file names. There's only four functions in this helper. Process takes an array or a string and the objects that you want to interpolate with it. And it will decide whether it needs to run each element in the array, or if it's just a string, it can interpolate just that one thing. Write outputs to a file, so you give it processed files and a file name, and it is going to either output just a string, or if it is a, an array of strings, it's going to map them uh, just to the output and join it. The last one is kind of like a helper function that runs the write process load workflow. So it kind of, uh, for a lot of default usage, this would be what you do if you didn't need to add in your own custom objects. So we ended up writing something kind of similar to this, but passing in the objects that we wanted. Uh, we could probably do this, compile. And then pass in this. Same result. So the only other magic is this. This is how we take any string in JavaScript and we interpolate it as a template string. So in order to do that, the only way is using new function where we are returning something between these backticks. In JavaScript, if you have something that is not a template string and you want to treat it as a template string, as far as I know, this is the only way that you can create a new template string out of something. So the other thing that we're adding here is we pass in these environment objects. And so when we create our new function, uh, we're going to apply it. We're going to call each of these, uh, the values of each of these things that we passed in as objects. And in order to make them available to the string as it interpolates, uh, we also pass in 
So the new function, the first arguments are the arguments to create for the function, and the last argument that you give to new function is always the function body. So we're going to pass in every single one of the names of the objects that we want available, and we're also going to create an output object. And then when we return the interpolated string, what we get back is we get back an array that has the interpolated string and it has this output object. So when we're inside our files, uh, we can actually do something like output something equals whatever. And if we were to write code that would, uh, you can see here, this is taking the first result, the string, we could write something kind of like this write function that would allow us to write the output as well. So I'm interested in or experimenting with the idea of could a CSS file include some kind of code in it that would require a JavaScript polyfill at runtime. So you have your CSS, you compile it, and you end up with CSS and JavaScript, but you end up with the JavaScript that you need in order to do what you wrote in your file. So that's kind of what I'm playing around with and it works in Node, and I also have a version of this for the browser um, with the exact same engine, but instead of loading from a file and writing to a file, it reads from DOM elements and can create and populate DOM elements and mount those to the page. So I'm kind of working on this in Node and the browser at the same time. I uh, hope that's fun, and uh, I can send these files to you if you want. Um, they're still under heavy development, but I'm hoping to get them polished up and put online soon so everybody can play with them. Thanks.